What is going on, YouTube? I am Lamont at Large, and today I am at the Gypsum Hill Cemetery here in Salina, Kansas. Gary G. Knuckles, uh, Staff Sergeant, U.S. Air Force, Vietnam vet. And it looks like his wife just passed just last year, so they're probably still designing the stone, and it's, I imagine, going to set right next to his. There was a story online about a woman that was found murdered in Mulberry Creek, which is off of Interstate 70 here in Kansas uh, in the middle of January 1986. Online it says she was buried here, uh, buried as a Jane Doe because they didn't have any identification on who she was. Uh, the body was found uh, maybe possibly a few days after she was murdered. Uh, but she had no identification uh, and they could not identify who she was or no family reported her missing. So she was buried here somewhere in this section of the cemetery uh, for 34 years. And then last July, uh, they received a possible DNA hit. Uh, apparently, uh, some detectives in Minnesota had put out a press release saying if anybody in the Minnesota area uh, had uh, relatives that were missing or they just disappeared to submit the DNA to for a comparison and they received a hit and then she was finally identified as Robin Ann Green, 28 years of age from Los Angeles. Uh, she was b married to uh, her husband, Michael Lewis Green. And the last time her family seen uh, Robin Ann Green alive was when they went to go visit her four kids that were living currently at that time with her ex-husband up in Minnesota. And that was the last time anybody ever seen her alive. So I spent about a good 20 to 30 minutes looking for her grave. The marker simply said uh, Jane Doe with the death date of 1986. Um, I have scoured this part of the cemetery. Uh, I have not been able to find it yet. Uh, they do suspect possibly that her husband might have had something to do with the murder, but of course he died in 2007. So uh, a murder that's possibly never going to be solved. But uh, when I do come back to the cemetery, I will uh, look for her marker. The family decided to leave Robin buried here and that they will get a marker with her name on it. So hopefully next time I come, here, I will be able to show it. Reed Ash, October 27th, 1995 to July 26th, 2014. I love you to infinity and beyond. Reed was a passenger in a car traveling down a highway here in town. And the driver uh, was 17 years old. For some unknown reason, she was drifting into the right-hand lane and then overcorrected and flipped a car. He was wearing his seatbelt and he still died. She wasn't wearing her seatbelt and she lived.
Jody and Salida, October 8, 1958 to December 15, 1978. Jody died in an automobile accident. And this is her brother right here. I don't know how he passed. And their mother is right here. Wow. Truly heartbreaking to bury your children. This year's Patrick Stephen Hubbard and his daughter Caitlin Ann. They both died together September 8, 2001, in a house fire. Caitlin's mother made an attempt to save her daughter from the fire, but somehow she slipped out of her hand and she fell out of a second story window trying to grab her daughter. And by the time the firefighters came to the scene, the house was just engulfed in flames and after the fire was put out, they discovered them inside the house, both dead. And the fire captain investigating the scene after everything was said and done determined that the fire was caused by a cigarette. And they don't know whose cigarette it was, but it lit a chair in the living room on fire and then the house just went up. Kimberly Rogers, September 12, 1962 to January 1st, 1985. She was shot and killed by her live-in boyfriend, a man by the name of Joseph Rortina. And originally when he was arrested, he was charged with second degree murder. And then the charge was reduced to voluntary manslaughter and then was further reduced again to involuntary manslaughter. Uh, it looked like it was an accidental shooting. Uh, this man, though, had an arsenal of guns in the home, and he was not allowed legally by law to have any guns because he was a convicted felon. And in the court proceedings, uh, Kimberly's family did acknowledge that they understood that it was an accident, but still, uh, he was responsible for her murder, and he was sentenced to 7 to 25 years in prison. Princess 
Angela Karan Bell, 17, of Salina, died and went to live with her father in heaven on Sunday, March 7, 2004. Angie was born September 5, 1986, in Topeka to Michael and Cindy Bell. She was a sophomore at Salina Central High School. She lettered in debate at Central and was proud to wear her letter jacket. She took many years of dance instruction in Topeka and loved to dance until her disease would no longer permit it. She was an avid chatterer over the internet and had many email buddies. Her first real job was at Penny's of Salina and she was proud of the paycheck she earned. She became a legal driver of Kansas and would help her dad drive back and forth on the almost monthly trips to the Cystic Fibrosis Clinic in Kansas City. She also was a member of the Crosswords Church in Salina. That is one of the toughest diseases to live with. The rigors of surviving with that disease is just beyond comprehension. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. Rest in peace, princess. Zay Santa Saya Juk, April 14th, 1978 to February 11th, 2002. Zay died in a car accident. According to police investigations, he was racing a man driving a white Camaro and he had went to pass him in an opposite lane, overcorrected and flipped his car into an embankment. Uh, he died at the scene. And it was also determined that alcohol was a factor in the crash. The police were looking for that white Camaro, but it is unknown to me if they ever found him. What some people might consider funny and they might remember you for doing certain things, I consider it novel and genius. And my Geo Metro was my most favorite car I've ever had. Jaden Aaliyah Hicks, September 17, 2001 to December 31st, 2013. Jaden was with her friends playing outside and a thunderstorm started coming through and as she was walking, she somehow walked near an above ground utility box and was electrocuted. Her friends were trying to pull her off the box, but every time they would touch her, they would get shocked. Finally, they got somebody with a fiberglass pole to get her off of the box. She was taken to the hospital and from there was taken to a rehab facility and she succumbed to her injuries a few months later. This is Kenny John Modine, December 15th, 1972 to November 21st, 
1988, uh, Kenny was playing basketball at school and all of a sudden he became uh, really sick and he fell and they rushed him to St. Mary's Hospital in Manhattan and uh, that is where he died. And I believe this is his mother right here. Christopher Scott Sexton, August 27th, 1971 to June 11th, 1989. Uh, Christopher was on a fire escape of a building on the third floor, and he was standing on top of the railing. And apparently he lost his balance, and he grabbed a power line to catch himself and was electrocuted and fell he was discovered about an hour later, but he was already dead. Live, but not live, but still alive by the grace of God. I am Lamont at large. I'm at the Gypsum Hill Cemetery here in Salina, Kansas. Thank you for watching my video. I appreciate it. I'll catch up with you on the next vlog. Peace out.